Welcome, audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in this video, we're going to talk about Isotopes update to the Tonal Balance Control 2. And I'm going to show you how to get better mixes with it. Um, essentially, what this plugin does is it checks the EQ spectrum of your mix to make sure you're in the right ballpark for your genre and your style. So it's a really cool plugin. So before we get to the video, I do want to mention I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosorcerer.com, you can uh, hear my samples and you can check out my rates. And I do offer 10% off to new customers. So uh, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe because I love making this content for you. And hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So without further ado, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and uh, we're going over the Total Balance Control 2 today. So we're actually going to add it onto our master fader. Um, that's pretty much where it needs to go. It needs to be the last plugin. It needs to be after all of your processing because you want to see how the processing is affecting your EQ spectrum. So let's uh, add it on over here. It's going to be under EQ, and then Total Balance Control 2. So let's open that up. All right, so this is what the Total Balance Control 2 looks like. Uh, you basically have your um, four bands here. You have your low, low mids, high mids, and highs. And you have these little white lines uh, that will kind of move when the song's playing. And you want these little white lines to um, go in between the green here. And if you can have that happening across all four bands, that means you have a solid mix. Now, these green areas will shift depending on what genre of music I choose or any custom profiles I load, which we'll go over in a second. Um, so this is the broad view. Now, we can change this to a fine view here, and this kind of gives you a different way to look at it here. Um, this one's kind of cool, but I like to work mostly in the broad view because you're never going to completely you know, match the EQ spectrum of a song you're trying to copy or um, you know, any of the profiles that they have in here. So let's go back to broad. So what I want to talk about next is the actual um, different profiles that exist in here, which is this section right here. So this is on bass heavy right now, and I think that's the default when you open it up. Um, let's see what other options they have. So they have quite a bit of genres in here, and I know the first version of Tonal Balance didn't really have this many in here, so it's kind of nice that they added some extra profiles. Um, for the song that we're doing, uh, you can categorize it under either pop or rock. Um, it's kind of like a pop punk ballad, so we'll just do rock for the hell of it. So let's put that on there. And uh, that kind of shifted the profile a little bit here. And uh, the other option you can do is you could actually hit this button here and you could do create target from audio file, which means that you can load any audio file into here and it will create a custom profile um, for that specific audio file you loaded. Now, if you're gonna load a file, don't load an MP3. We wanna make sure that we have you know, high quality audio we put in here. Let it either be a FLAC file or a WAV file. Um, and I think for Mac, it would be an AF uh, you can put in there too. This one probably supports that, I would assume. So that's how you would do that. Um, another control on here that I, I think is important is under settings. And let me bring this over here. So uh, the average time, this is how quickly that this these white lines kind of update within here. Um, the default is 10 seconds. I think 10 seconds is good. I would leave it here. Um, if you want to see something quicker, I definitely would not go down to like three seconds. I would go down to five and that would be, that's where I lowest I would go with that. So let's leave it on 10. And uh, another control in here, or not so much control, but another um, you know monitoring thing you can look at is called the crest factor. And this is going to move when we play the song. And if it's um, too much to this side, like if it goes past this black line here, that's basically saying that your low end is compressed too much. And if it goes too much past this line here on the left, it's saying that your low end is under compressed. So, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a nice little monitoring tool to have. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best mixer in the whole world, but I've never really had an issue with my Crest Factor monitoring on here. So uh, you may not either, So, but it's here and uh, you can use it if need be. So those are basically the main controls of this plugin minus uh, this option down here, which we'll talk about in a second. But the other kind of controls in here that are maybe are less important is that you can solo each band individually and you have to basically hold down on the solo button here and see it kind of grays out the other bands that I let go, they become reactivated. And uh, this button here will reset the white lines and have the plugin kind of re, you know, analyze the spectrum.
So the other thing down here that I think is very, very important is actually where you can go in and select any other um, isotope EQs that are throughout your whole session here. This is part of their inner system communications for plugins. And one thing I found very interesting, it may not be that interesting, is that it doesn't support Ozone 8. And I can't remember if Ozone 8 was prior to this whole inter-system you know, communication coming out. So I have Ozone 8 as my mastering plugin on here, and I can't access any of the EQs from here. So if you guys have Ozone 9, you're not going to have this problem. So I just wanted to point that out, that Ozone 8 is not supported with this in here. So with that being said, in my scenario, I would probably use Neutron 3 for this. And to do that, um, let me actually move down these plugins a bit here. Down one slot. Let's move Ozone 8 down. Okay, and let me put uh, the Neutron 3 EQ on here. Okay, so uh, if you want to see more to one plugin at one time, you need to hit this little uh, red box here, click on that, and then we'll open up Tonal Balance Control 2. And what you're gonna see is now when I go down to select a source, you're actually gonna see uh, master-eq, that's saying, hey, my track is the master track here by the name of it, and it has this EQ on it. And that goes for all the other tracks in here. So if I click on uh, this one here, as you're gonna see, it put the EQ right in here, which is really cool. And what it's gonna actually do is that when I move this band here, it's gonna move this band over here. So let's actually see this in action. So see, that's pretty cool. This is part of the uh, Isotope uh, inner system communications for plugins. So this allows plugins to talk to each other, which I think is a really cool thing. And uh, I think it's actually been around for a little bit through Isotope. I think it maybe came out with Neutron 3. So if you've never seen it before, this is how it works. So, I mean, that's pretty much all the controls you need to know in Tonal Balance uh, Control to actually use this thing. So what we're gonna do is actually listen to the song now and you can kind of see where my um, you know spectrum is within this plugin and see if we're in a good place or a bad place. Actually, before we do that, let me actually default the EQ first here. So if you wanna um, default the bands and Pro Tools, you can just double click on them like this. That'll put them right back to where they need to go. Let's do that. Okay, so now we got a flat uh, spectrum to work with here. And the reason I put this EQ in was just for you to be able to see the inner system, you know, plug-in communication. Um, I'm not going to really need to use it unless there's issues with my spectrum. So let's actually see how it looks here. Uh, I'm actually going to close this first so you can get a bigger view of it. So let me play the song. And I'll drive all night. And I'll drive all day. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much looking perfect under this profile here. And the crest factor, if you noticed it, was getting a little bit, you know, I guess close to the overcompressed side when there wasn't actually any drums in there. And I just really wanted to have a kind of a tight, smooth low end in this. So that's, uh, you know, that's not uncommon. So why don't we actually look at this in the fine mode and you can see what it looks like. So let me play it again. I'll just play a little bit less of it here. And I'll drive Okay, so we, we have a really solid mix based on this EQ spectrum here. Um, obviously there's other factors to EQ that make for a good mix, but uh, from an EQ standpoint, we're looking great. So what this does down here um, by using the Neutron EQ here is that it's saying, hey, if, I don't know, say this band was too soft or too hot, we can, you know, open up the CQ over here and then we can, you know, lower that second band here and make adjustments. So that's pretty much what that is for. Now, I do want to show you what a custom profile looks like here. So we're going to go back to broad. And if I go uh, over here, let's do a target audio file. I don't know. Let's go to music. Let's do this test file here. 
Cool. So look at it made a spectrum in here, which is quite a bit different than our spectrum we were just working with here. Uh, I believe this is actually a shine down song here, but it looks like they have a really kind of flat spectrum throughout because these are very tight. So that's actually kind of telling me, hey, they got a really solid mix <laughs> to some extent, I should say. But I know the record sounds great, so I know it's a great mix. But that's how you import um, a custom profile. So, I mean, again, there's really nothing else to look at in here. The thing you want to use this for you just want to make sure that your white lines are staying within your green areas. Now, when you have maybe a breakdown section of the song or something that has less instruments, you don't have to focus on this as much because there, you know, if you have something that just has acoustic guitar and vocals, maybe it's like a verse or it's a breakdown, um, you're not going to be covering this whole spectrum completely. Really use this when your song's in full force, like at the chorus, you got your drums, you got your bass, you got your vocals, you got your guitars. Um, that's the best way to make sure that you're, you're looking good here. And again, you know, just check your crest factor. Unless you're mixing really bad, I feel like this isn't going to go, you know, beyond the, the black lines. I think you'll be okay. So, yeah, that's the uh, Tonal Balance Control 2 that just came out with this update here from Isoto. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe. I love making this content for you. And make sure that notification bell to have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys and peace out.